Good evening, everybody. So today, I will be going over my research for EE for from U of University of Buffalo. So my project is on AES 128 implementation in DHDL. So let's go over a little introduction. Encryption. Um, as electronics became prevalent, so did storage of information. Information is stored bits on memory modules between different architecture types. In many cases, information that has to be stored is highly sensitive. For that, it could be personal information at banks, such as social security number, credit card info, and other personal identifiers. The United States government has many military secret systems. Any information regarding these ideas is probably sensitive. Sensitive data must be conserved in a secure fashion, and that's where encryption comes in. Encryption is the most effective way to secure data. In simple terms, if you read an encrypted file, you basically have to have a secret password to encrypt it. This blocks people from accessing data that's not. Um, it's important for strong encryption. Um, this paper goes over in depth what encryption is, what FPGA is on, current standards, uh, how to implement on FPGA. Just a little background info. Encryption is not a new concept. Uh, symbol storm, it's basically just language. Um, written language is encryption of ideas on the place of transit. Sumerians had cuneiform, Egyptians had hieroglyphs. Um, in the world wars, uh, there was information that was encrypted, sent it back and forth, and then the Zimmerman telegram was intercepted. Uh, that's what started off with World War One. Uh, there's a World War Two example as well, and on the right side I have a little diagram showing furtherance of um, encryption types. In recent history, um, FIPS or Federal Information Processing Standard um, was published by Data Encryption Standard, which is uh, an algorithm for encryption, specifically in symmetric decryption. Uh, AES is of that type, so I'll go over that a little more later. Um, there's some more uh, timeline information, and then in 2001. The National Institute of Science and Technology selected Belgian Vision now as an advanced encryption standard. So that's what encryption encryption. The key is basically a piece of information that controls the operation of an algorithm, then regretting access to the encrypted message. There are two types of keys, secret key and public key. Secret keys are known as symmetric cryptography um, because both of communicating entities must have the same key. Uh, public keys were prevalent in the 70s, um, where asymmetric cryptography are not as uh, secure as. Uh, Secret keys, so they use less today. And on the right, it's a little block cipher diagram and a screen cipher diagram showing how uh, the plain text blocks come in, the cipher text comes out. Secret key ciphers are important because they are two types of secret key type extension block or screen. Um, the screen cipher encrypts it bit by bit, block cipher encrypts block by block, so that's the meter, um, in size of power 2, 16, 32, 64, etc. Um, in the case of block cipher, if any bit is changed in the cipher, um, in the cipher text, then a change is propagated throughout the entirety of the plain text block, creating a muddle of information, and essentially uh, the information is lost. <clears throat> um, with block encryption, though, uh, it's possible for attackers to predict what that is saying, and they can look for patterns in the, uh, in the blocks. <clears throat> so I'll talk about AES. Um, the advanced encryption standard came as a result of the requirement for high volume encryption. Um, so essentially, uh, it has to work on Java, C, as well as ARM processors and smart cards. Um, and a lot of products are beginning to incorporate AES now, especially um, cell phone based and digital recorders, etc. Um, so, implementation of AES, you need a cipher and a key scanner. Input data comes in, then the cipher executes encryption and decryption on the block of that. Um, the input key must be prepared for the cipher during each round of iteration, and that's where the key standard comes in. Uh, the key standard calculates the different keys in each round based on the original key, the function. So FPGAs are fuel programmable gateways. Um, the piece of hardware which functionality can be programmed, unlike an ASIC, which is application specific and it is circuitry. So basically, FPGA is a reconfigured. Um, this allows, this introduces some versatility for FPGAs because on the fly, cryptographic algorithms can be switched um, or algorithmically add uh, uh, implementation on FPGAs is safer um, and faster than software implementation. Uh, when encryption is implemented on software, it's possible key loggers to be used or other roundabout methods of obtaining. So I'll go over architectural comparison. Um, despite uh, Rizendal winning, the other 
um, encryptions that were entered in the contracts have also been probably waived, if you will say. A few other big ones are RC6, Serpent, and Kufish. These use different um, architectural types, and they do a comparison. Um, there's iterative looping, iterative loop, uh, iterative looping with partial loop or more, with full loop or more, pipeline and sub pipeline. It has to do with how the, the key information and the blocks are propagated. Um, there are strategies also for efficiency to keep these stuffs for a while. On top is uh, non feedback mode, on the bottom is feedback mode. Uh, feedback mode is preferred despite it being slower because it's more difficult to crack. Um, the output is fed back into the input and essentially just creates a more difficult chain of encryption. <clears throat> and as you can see on the bottom graph or table, I'm sorry, uh, version DAO had a high throughput with the lookup method. Uh, the issue with Serpent was that it required too much slices of the FPGA. Um, so now we'll go into a little further original data implementation of block key size 1.8. SBox implemented using lookup table, so with high throughput and low latency. So this is just an overall block diagram of what is going on in the uh, calculations and transformations of when the key comes in, uh, plain text in, plain text out, and what set cipher text is. Um, generally, for AS, generally refers to 128 bits of data in the cipher. Operate on the state of four by four bits. Uh, in terms of so now we're talking about the subbyte function. Uh, it's a non-linear transformation on all the bytes in the input state. Sbox stands for substitution box, which bytes fed through. Sbox is actually a couple of functions. First, the multiplicity of the inverse in GF. Excuse me. GF stands for Galois field, and it should also have a finite field. Um, since it's represented in binary form, it's perfect for use in translation of computational data, and that's why it's used in encryption. An all mathematical operation or time to set up. Uh, the second operation is an affine transform, usually speed up operations, and then uh, Xbox are pre calculated um, so that the outputs can be stored in the lookup table, making it easily retrievable and faster than calculating on the fly. Um, and then to move bytes are around in the state loop in round, the shift row function is used. The rows are shifted n minus 1 times left. For example, third row is shifted left to right. And then on the right, there's a little visual representation. Um, next step is the mixed column function. This function outputs 4 by 4 byte columns from operations that were 4 columns in the current state. The individual output byte result in the calculation of all 4 other byte inputs. The calculation is best represented by a transformation table. And then for decryption, essentially these functions are inverse for undoing. So, quality of, of encryption depends really on um, the key size, the infrastructure, and the algorithm. Um, best way to crack a ciphertext generally is through trial and error. So the best way to prevent this is with higher bit keys, which will require a much longer time for computers to brute force crack. So I'll talk about DHL implementation. So first, you must design specification in DHL coding. Basically, make the block diagram first, and then go about implementing that design however you like. Um, then you simulate and verify it. Synthesize it on Xilinx integrated software environment, generate the file, and program and flash that PPA. Um, so, use a logical block diagram of the uh, encryption implementation. There's controller, there's key rounds, and states, and uh, on the right side shows the totality of the pins, um, what they represent, and so on and so forth. Key block combines with key round block to reform the key expansion transform to generate the proper round pins. The controller block takes the write signal, the reference signal, and the neighbor signal to various the entire system's control system. Um, each round key is implemented in one cycle. Uh, so, in for the encryption, there's 13 block cycles, 15 is 11, so there's a total of 25 block cycles. So, I'll be going over the efficiency. There's a number of things that the designs that are uh, sought after either low power, high throughput, low area, depending on the application. Um, for low pipe, low power design, you can use pipelining. Previously discussed. Um, other techniques include using embedded functional blocks, uh, clock gating, etc., etc. Dynamic voltage scaling uh, can reduce static and dynamic power consumption as well. Straight up is by lowering the voltage, you're also reducing operating frequency. There's there's an issue there, but you just basically scale down the voltage until the point right before proper functionality is lost. Um, high throughput is can be realized through uh, we'll realize through heavy pipelining. 
um, this is my four. So in Xylus ISC, um, this is how you analyze code and implement it. Uh, project here is different than the AES pr previously. Um, what I'm talking about right now, but uh, it's just a good reference to see the uh, design overflow. Um, one thing that you need when you make this is the UCF, the user constraint file. You can map single actual pins on the FPGA, uh, given the GUI of graphical user interface for the plan ahead. Uh, and in conclusion, uh, cryptology is complex but easy to understand with the building blocks. AES is broken down. Cryptology is widely employed today due to major importance in information security. And some of the information methods are investigated, efficient designs were explored, um, and how to implement the code was explained. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my presentation uh, and have a wonderful day. Go Jazz.